Well, after a brief respite from making videos or doing much machining, to be honest, um, I'm back, and it is a Saturday, and I have the whole day to myself, and I've already squandered most of it, but today I will be cutting uh, and a profile. Profile? Yeah, profile. So this has been a challenge for me so far. So I have this vise, right? And this allows me to cut the top of things, like this, right? Where I'm, you've seen some of the videos, hopefully, of... And this is the messed up area, but you know, different uh, shapes in the top of metal. Same thing in the back here, mostly pockets. Pockets are uh, what I've done so far. And it's all been practice. This hasn't been anything useful yet. Um, and I'll continue to do pockets and stuff. But the other thing I want to do is work on profiles. So the actually cutting the shape out of the edge of metal. And so you see. Uh, see. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, so. This is some scrap aluminum that I got from Maker Gear. Uh, Rick was nice enough to let me add his uh, scrap in. But uh, I might have some some outtakes in this footage of, of what I've been trying to cut out here. Basically though, when you're cutting out the outline, um, you need to do one of two things. You either need to clamp it down, as I'll show you in a second here, or you need to have it in a vise and then be able to cut around stuff so that it's kind of the same thing here, where you're not cutting down into the material and removing everything in the center, but you're just cutting on the outside, and then you'd actually be utilizing what was in the center. The difference being that you go all the way down through the material. So, I want to do that. I tried that on this one. Um, I had some clamping issues, and what I've done since is actually put this tooling plate back on here, and I'll show you that in a second. But the idea is, cut all the way down through a piece of material, through the stock. So this one's about, I think it was... That's less than a half inch, probably three-eighths of an inch. That's about three-eighths of an inch deep. And so I'm actually going to trace out the profile of something enough time so that it actually cuts the thing out of there. And I haven't done this yet. Um, some of the challenge being the work holding, but then also the fact that once you're down through it, um, you know, it's going to start vibrating and, and wanting to pop out. So you have to be careful about that. And we'll see how careful I can be about that. So, um, yeah, let's get to the work holding. So this is the tooling kit I may or may not have talked about so far. Basically, um, there's these standard kits you can buy from the likes of Grizzly and Shars and everywhere else. It's all basically from the same factory in China. Um, basically though, they consist of a couple things. There's this hold down block. There is uh, these little ramp looking things. Little ramp looking things. There are T-slots, T-slot nuts rather, screws that you put into the T-slot, and then nuts for the top of the actual thing. And spacer, and other spacers. Let's see. Hey. There we go. And nuts that go on top as such, right? And so basically you're supposed to put it through here, put the T-slot in, put the screw down into the T-slot nut, you put it through the actual holder piece, and then you screw the, the nut onto the top of it. Sounds great. Well, I ordered the smallest screws I could find, and these are way, still way too big for the T-slots on the Tate mill. So it turns out I needed to get like a yeah, not way too big, but the, definitely the nuts are too big. These things are monstrous. Basically, there's a there's a set from a little machine shop, a six millimeter set. It's much smaller though. This is like a fifty piece set. You know, you see these standard a lot. You'll you know, there's a nice holding case and everything. You put all the little fiddly bits in each part. Um, but it's really meant for you know a bigger mill. It's meant for a bridge port or a Tormach or something like that. Um, so what's going to end up happening is, like you see here, I, uh, I basically jury rig it so that I have this tooling plate. I have 10 30 second screws that I got from the hardware store and I'm going to probably get some more because these are a little bit too high. There's some T-slot nuts that came with the uh, it came with the mill, which are really, really simple. Uh, let me see if I can get these out of here. So these are really simple. It's just a it's just a tapped screw hole, and then you know it's just they cut it out of the piece of thin 
thin profile steel it feels like. And so basically I use this. I could put a screw on top of this, but I chose not to. Basically I just use this and tighten it down with this thing with a pair of pliers. And we'll see if it works. I mean, but basically the idea is you apply a downward force by using the screw acts as the I guess no no the the little block here acts as the lever arm and then you apply a downward force and you get you know force times lever arm you get some torque right here you want the moment of torque right here right excuse my lack of mechanical knowledge it's been a while uh, but basically having that enough points and the other key point is keeping the spindle out of the workspace here right so I had done this earlier without the tooling plate and because of the T-slots down here um, this screw actually interfered with the spindle so I guess I can zoom out yeah so I had the T-slot I had this, the, the screw going right into the T-slot with a secondary uh, T-slot nut on there and it wasn't working just because the alignment so that's what the, tool, or the tooling plate helps because this has a variety of different holes where you can actually screw into it so I'm not sure if this is going to work. The first time this, this piece that I started cutting, um, it actually, the work moved. And that's actually why I stopped it. So I'm going to try the exact same file. Um, I'll tell you about the shape if it actually ends up getting cut out properly. Uh, but I'm a little nervous about it. This is definitely the first uh, shape that I've really tried. So we'll see if it works. Uh, I got a new, a new cutter in here. I uh, I had bought this set. I think I might have told you about it, but I bought a uh, you know a six pack of double ended four flute spindle uh, end mills. These are just high speed steel, just kind of a cheap pack from Shars, but it's you know the same side, same on each side. It's a little bit bigger than normal. This is the uh, I think it's a one eighth, so the smallest that came with it. So now I've kind of started up my tooling. You know I should have enough to really be able to get a variety of cuts, but it's a matter of getting all the work holding right. So today's exercise is really in work holding. So uh, I guess that's it for this. Let's uh, try it out. I, I guess I should mention as well because I'm sure someone's going to mention in the comments. Yes, I do plan on getting a bigger, better uh, vise. There's a bunch of them out there, but uh, I haven't yet because some of them get kind of pricey. Uh, so. I will be doing that in the near future, but this is a good exercise and work holding just with these as well. So we'll see if we'll see if this work can actually maintain its its position. And I'll also, oh, I should mention too, uh, if you look where my finger is here, um, because we're cutting all the way down through. If this was the end mill, because we have to cut all the way down through it, I don't want to cut in the tooling plate over here. So I have a piece of just a sacrificial piece of metal underneath here. And I'm hoping that's enough. I mean, I could calculate it so that it, it stops, but just in case it doesn't, I don't want to cut the tooling plate. I have a little piece of sacrificial material underneath. It's just a really thin piece of crappy aluminum. So uh, hopefully that'll do it. All right, we're going to try this thing. Uh, got all the work down pretty solidly. Got it all squared up. Got my cam model all set. I don't really know what else to do before just trying it out. So here we go.
Well, I probably should have figured as much, but uh, not having a clamp on, what side was it, this side over here, it, uh, I think that's what ultimately did me in. So I didn't have one here, I probably should have thought I'd get away with it, but I think once the, the forces got up high enough, it, it didn't matter. So let's see if we can, I'm going to turn this off. All right, so you can see, so there's a couple problems here. One, it's really down in there. I think I got pretty close, but I don't think it was close enough. So this is a, uh, like I said before, this is a 3 8 inch, uh, actually I'm going to go wash this out real quick. Hold on. All right, well, that, uh, me needing to wash that out is pretty indicative of part of the problem here. Not not really the problem, but man, the last bit. Uh, so first off, I didn't get all the way through the material. So that means I need to either do a final pass in the software. Oh, I can feel. Well, oh, you can actually kind of see it there too. You can see it's just about through. It actually has that final impression down there. See that has the, yeah, you probably can't see that, but that H shape, that was just about cut through. So next time I do this, I need to uh, add one final pass for, I don't know how much, 
That's the part that scares the crap out of me, though, to be honest, because that's when stuff starts flying. So you see, this is the profile cut. Um, these pieces actually aren't meant to be in here. I probably could set that up as a pocket, but it was easier just to you know, set my outline, and then off I went. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what happened down here. I could see the chips changed uh, towards the end. And part of me is concerned that, okay, so either either the mounting moved, which is very possible, or it got too high up on the, uh, on the end mill to the point where it started to get into the taper, and maybe that ran into the, the walls here. Uh, I don't really know. If that's the case, then I need to figure out something else. I'm not sure how to do that, if that's the case. But, uh, man, I got close on that one. I almost got that H all the way through. So I guess I'll uh, go back to cam and try that again. The part turned out, I mean, it looks pretty good for what I said. I mean, I know I haven't said what this is yet. Actually, I was thinking about it, and uh, I'll probably post this before I finish. And so if you can guess what this is, I'll send you one. Uh, I'll cut one out and send it to you. If you can guess what this thing is, you can just email me or leave it in the YouTube comments, but, um, yeah, that's too bad. I'm glad that the, so the work holding held up pretty well, uh, work holding held up pretty well, uh, the chips obviously, uh, did not hold up that well, <sighs> let's turn this light back on, you can see I was doing a lot of brushing, a lot of, uh, putting WD-40 in there and everything, that was unfortunate. Uh, it, I mean, I keep thinking I need to get into a, a flood cooling system, but I'm just not set up for it yet, and I'm not sure I want to invest in that yet. But the more I see this, the more I think, yeah, I just want to get the chips out of there. Some people have suggested to me that uh, blowing air in is just as useful as actually having flood cooling, because really I, I'm not cutting fast enough to need cooling. But uh, yeah, regardless, I'd still like it. I mean, that'd be nice. So I'll probably try this once or twice more, uh, but I will probably be posting this video before I do so. So, if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.